Well, good evening everyone. Okay, so I got soda and I got stuff. Gotta have soda when you work on these things. So we have a wall enclosure and a bunch of parts because we're going to build this thing from Mod Kits DIY. These are usually pretty fun, and the wah pedal I have right now is just a really rudimentary basic one. Um, the description here, this is the classic wah tone you've come to expect with a hint of extra bite and growl. True bypass switching ensures no loss of signal while the wah effect is not engaged, and the long life potentiometer is manufactured specifically for use in pe wah pedals to provide years of smooth, quiet operation, and point-to-point -point construction allows advanced kit builders to easily experiment with modifications and further tailor the tone to more individual tastes. Cool. Okay. True Bypass is awesome because the most famous wah pedals are sort of notorious for being tone suckers. And then they give me the list of all the parts in this. That's nice. And the various mounting screws. That's nice. And the various resistors and things. So let's get to part one. So the first thing they want me to do is take this piece and install the front bumpers and put the this assembly on the mounting block. Okay, generally the instructions they ship with these are pretty good. I've been looking through these and either my attention span is really bad tonight or these are kind of mm. So, well look, they usually supply really good pictures in the back, which helps a lot. Because when you've never actually assembled one of these things before, it can get a little brain fuzzy. Okay, so here's our stops. And, let's see. Those are the front bumpers, right? That makes sense. They go in there like that. And they should stay. But they kind of don't. Thanks, guys. Here's a little rubber sticky bumper. Does that go on the front or does that go on the back? Let's see. So, on the toe end of the treadle, direct away from you, fasten and mount that. Well, that's that. The front bumper holder, oh, that's just the holders. Now what's funny is on the bumpers they don't actually put any good way to fasten them down so I assume I'm going to have to get a drop of glue to do this, which is fine, I don't mind, but that's a little fuzzy. And I'm assuming on the back they're going to have us put that little dot there. Okay, so that's that. Let's figure out this thing here. Okay, so we have this bracket that goes there. Okay, that's nice. And then this probably goes, you know, something goes in between here. And I know all you folks at home are screaming at me, you're such a dummy, you're such a dummy, but you tell me what that thing is. Bracket. Okay. What is that? It's not that. Let's look back through the parts list and see what they call brackets. They could be more specific. Okay, so front bumpers look like that. We got that. Rear bumper looks like that. Center pillow block tension adjustment screw. Okay, that's that. Okay. 
rack tensioner. And some other stuff. So Okay, now well, for starters they want me to use these screws. That's the picture of the screw, right? We, we agree on that. And then they have a lock washer, which would be this. Right, that makes sense. So I'll put that in there. And then put that on there. Alright. So we're off to a good start, right? I think so. Self-tapping screws are so much fun, but this would kind of suck to have to do this totally by hand, so kind of glad to have the uh, a massive screwdriver to help me out. Oh good, and she sheared right off. Great. That's a wonderful way to start our project, isn't it? <sighs> Stand by. Okay, so we're back. Um, let us never speak of this travesty again. Okay, so, yeah, this was the screw they gave you, and they expected you to put a washer on it, which is okay, I did forget the washer, and then a spring washer, so two washers. But even so, on the low side, this thing will bottom out in the hole and it will strip out, so that sucks. This thing needs to be a couple of millimeters shorter than it is, and that's bad, so I went and replaced it with my own screws. Now we can actually get back to work. Let us not speak of this travesty again, and for those of you at home following along, if you do decide to build this project, um, computer type screws usually work okay for that. Um, but yeah, that was uh, upsetting very much upsetting so I don't like to work when I'm angry so the next thing they seem to want me to do is to put this this in there but I love that they don't really show which way the teeth go so we'll look in the picture apparently the teeth go forward according to the picture here so we'll do that and they have the screw head going that way, and then a lock washer and some other stuff. So let's see if this is the right screw. Uh, mm, this might be the right screw. Pretty close. See if there's a nut for this screw. That's not the nut for this screw. Is this the nut for this screw? No. Is this the nut for this screw? Yes. Okay, so we have the nut and screw and the hole here for that is just, just big enough. Again, fit and finish people, fit and finish. Okay, so it's going to go through here, I guess. And by the way, for those of you who are telling me I... Something fell on my lap. Yeah, this part fell on my lap. For those of you telling me I'm digging my own grave by using a power screwdriver, this is not a particularly torquey power screwdriver. I have more torque in my wrist than this does by quite a long shot. No innuendo jokes. That's through there. That fits kind of snug and it seems to be able to flip flop. I kind of have it pinned to one side, so I'll back it off a little bit so it can kind of be in the middle. Okay. 
That looks like the middle to me. And then we'll want to put a nut and a washer on it and take it together. So this was the nut that fit it. No, that was not the nut that fit it. Which was the nut that fit it? This little one right here. And then we're supposed to use a lock washer too, which these are the little lock washers. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, how's that work? Does that work? Not really. This stupid screw isn't quite long enough for this lock washer. Or am I crazy? Or is this thing sprawled too much? I'm stressing here. I don't like stressing. Stressing's not good. That fits on there. Okay. And there's like just barely enough room for the lock washer. Seriously? Okay. Let's see if we can get that to even start threading. A little bit. Come on. Come on, Nelly. You can do it. You can do it. That darned old lock washer's got too much, too much spring on it, so we'll have to fix it. Let's see if we can fix it. That looks like it fixed it. Stand by while we adjust. Okay, so after refishing through the bucket of things, there was a screw of the equal diameter that fit the same nut, and that one's just long enough that the threads come through the other side of the nut, so now we're good there. And what is interesting is for the front bumper modification, they're talking about cutting the lip off the front bumpers here. Is that necessary? Is that mandatory? Do they really want us to do that? Because if we do that, they're going to come like flush down. This is so confusing. Okay, small screw. Not the. Uh, the rack to the rack mount with the teeth pointed toward the toe end. Got that. Do not over tighten it so it can't swing freely while well, it swings freely. Okay, paper backing from felt pad and attach it to the treadle's inside surface when centered between the bumper holders and the. What? It will cushion the foot switch when it's turned on and off. So I guess it's supposed to go here, right? That sounds right. It's just a felt pad, so I suppose if I F this up, I can just get another felt pad. Uh, this is one of these projects, once it's done working, we will never speak of it again. Okay, so we'll say that goes there. That's what I can tell, right? Okay, so... Yeah, we got to talking about attaching things. So using wire cutters or small scissors, clip off the top end of the two bumpers. The bumpers should be fairly smooth and will go into the bumper holders. Yeah. Okay. Context men or other pliable he's going to modify them. So these go in here and then apparently you're supposed to trim them so they are narrower. They're too big this way, so we're supposed to trim off the shear that. So we'll do that with our knife, and then we'll see in a second. Okay, so this should be pretty much everything on page one. Cut these bumpers shorter, glue them in place. That's a peel and stick. That's a peel and stick. And then we have this debacle to attach, which I did with machine shop stuff last night. Uh, let us not speak of this again. Okay, so now we're on to the next page. So hopefully something good will happen. Okay, so...
mount an L bracket on the outer surface of the base of the two long what? Okay, okay, I think I got this. Okay, so this is a honking long screw. And then there's this thing that goes in there. And this goes through there. Okay, we're cool there. Making, getting that figured out. That's going to go in, not going to go down here. That's going to go down here. So there's a, a bracket thing that's supposed to go with this. So let's find that. Okay, that's this. So there's a bracket, right? Got a bracket. Okay. That. But what's supposed to go here? If that goes there, because that fits there, then that covers up that. Is there supposed to be something screwed there? Did you not tell me there's something supposed to be screwed there? Frustration is mine, but that's okay. Okay, so they want me to put this into place with the bigger screws. I mean, these that fits the holes pretty good. Those are the right diameters. And we're going. Okay. Like this. Okay, should be like this, right? I think I'm getting this. I think we're getting it. There better not be something that goes in that rear hole, though. I'm going to be very unhappy. Come on. Play ball with me here. See, this is this is the fun. You get to watch the the monkey playing football here. So if you decide to take this project on at home, you'll actually be in good shape, right? Okay, so that fits that. Does this fit that? Please fit that. Come on, please fit that. Does that screw have a nick in it or is that the wrong size? That just had a nick in it. Okay, so I got two nuts that fit. That's good. We seem to be fans of using washers and lock washers, and I can't really blame you when you're not welding and or soldering this stuff for moving, so. Drop two washers on there. Drop two lock washers on there. You know, this is really, like I say, this is watching the, watching the monkey play football. I think that's the polite version of it. So that goes like that. Okay. That seems to be okay. Seems alright. Tighten those down. Watch it break off. And just watch it spin uncontrollably. Yep. Yep, she'll be spinning. Okay. So. It's snug, but obviously it's going to need a little more than that, so we'll put a wrench on it so it can't turn, and then we'll just give it a quick zap. One, and two. Now what's going to happen is, as soon as I'm going to turn this upright to look at it and examine my progress, we'll see that it has somehow come way, yeah, sure enough, it's way off kilter now. Isn't that great? Wonderful. So we'll loosen up one screw, turn it, and then try again. Sir. 
That looks close enough for close enough to pass anyway. Okay. Almost there. Give that a little bit more of a helping hand. Yeah. Alright, good. Alright, like good. Okay, we're gonna call that good. So Okay, so that's like that. And then we want to screw the tension adjustment screw into pillow block, blah, blah, blah. Pillow block mount. Okay. So we're not actually putting anything in the base yet. We're just putting this together because we can, apparently. So, whatever. So this goes through here, right? Okay, that should go through there without any fuss, right? Okay, that's fine. And then this goes here. So this is how you adjust, apparently, how much um, pressure it takes to make this thing go. So that's fine. Just snug that up with our fingers. And I can already see that this pin over here that gets tapped into the top. So okay. So now we're supposed to continue to install things on the bottom using number four nuts and screws and lock washers and mount the four terminal screws. And, okay. So terminal strips is shown in drawing one. So let's go find drawing one. Doo -doo -doo. Drawing one is probably just going to tell us where to put everything. So where is drawing one? Give me drawing one. Give me drawing one. That's drawing two. That's drawing one. That's what I like. I just like a big drawing where I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So drawing one has terminal strip here and here and here and uh, and then audio jacks, DC power jack, wah pot, a little terminal strip in the corner, foot switch. <coughs> okay, I don't think we need to really watch me do this on camera, but this is the screw and there's a nut and a lock washer and I'm going to put this together and then we'll see what it's done. Okay, so here's drawing number one. And here's the thing. So this stuff's kind of laid on its side, and this jack kind of got disturbingly close to that, so I kind of turned it a little bit. But other than that, I think we got the diagram down pretty good. Got that face in the right direction, got that in there. Got all these things where we can solder them. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, moving on. <sighs> what page was I on? Okay. Probably the put all of the stuff in the things page. How to solder. Yeah, I love some of these pages. Okay. Using the number four screws, put your terminals in for drawing one. Done. Mount the input jack. Done. Mount the output jack. Done. Mount the DC power jack. Done. Oh, by the way, the DC power jack. This inside thing is kind of at an angle, so don't crank that nut down too much or you're going to strip the tar out of that DC power jack. Okay, um, so mount the wah pot. Be sure to press it all the way down against the bottom of the bracket. Did that. Uh, small flat washer, da 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 mounting bracket, yeah, done. Okay. Uh, mount the foot switch. Done. Okay. So. Now they're talking about putting this on this, which that should be okay, but there should be a thing to hold this against that, right? It's got to be, because that's not going to stay up on there with 
magic. There's got to be a thing that goes there. wonder where that's at. To find it. That's what logic says, anyway. But we're not playing logic. So, place the treadle on top of the base as shown in the drawing. Yeah. Is that go that way or that go that way? I'm trying to remember which way the pillow block was supposed to go. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, yeah. Make sure the rack stays inserted through the right to line up the bearing pin. Insert the bearing pin. Holes, use a hammer and a pin punch, tap it into there. And adjust the tension with an Allen key to make you happy. Okay. okay. So there is a thing that. Oh, that's what they're using for that? Seriously, that's what they're using for that. Oh, that's funny. Okay. That's really funny, actually. Okay, so that goes on there, and then this pin has to go through here. It's got to go through the black part, which is now bobbling around, of course. Two, two, two. Okay, we made it through there, now we're going to come out the other side, allegedly. Maybe I have that too tight. Is that tight? Is that even snug? Is that Allen key even snug? I don't know. I can't really turn it with this. Okay, so let's make sure this is really, really not the problem. So we're just going to take two, three turns out of that. Then we'll try again. It's got to go there. This has to go through the block thing in the middle, which I'm working on trying to get squared away, but it's floating around in the air. And it's probably too far forward now. There, okay, I'm through that. Come on, we're almost through. We're getting caught on that pillow block thing in the middle. It doesn't want to stay straight. There we go. Kind of hold it there. This is very freaking finicky and fiddly. Okay, so we're coming out the other side now. That's kind of cool. That looks good. See, we can see it coming through on the other side. And then at this point, we're supposed to give it a love tap and the hammer. So we'll do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're back again, and I undid one of my additional screw-ups. The washers needed to be on this side, so this was over farther. Because this has to line up with this. And when you put the pedal on, make sure you tuck this behind the, behind the pot, or you're going to be cursing, uh, cursing about it. Um, second of all... Make sure your bracket on the top is straight enough that as it goes up and down, it will remain on the gears. If you don't do that, you'll be cursing it and then you'll be adjusting it. And that's not fun. Okay. Are we ever going to get to the part where we actually solder some stuff? That would be great. See, here's some great detail. See, they want you to put the nuts and stuff behind there, like that, so don't goof that up, like I might have, but I didn't now because that's fixed, so it's never too late to fix something that you goofed up with. Okay, so now they're having us draw, or they're having us work with drawing number two. So let's go to drawing number two. Because this is where we start playing with electricity. Which means I should probably plug in my soldering iron and warm it up. Let's see. So we'll get drawing two off the list here. Take a look at it. So drawing two, they're having us play with wire. And here's wire. And the lugs all have numbers. See, they have numbers. 
right? One through seven, uh, or I'm sorry, one through eight, and then nine through sixteen, and then they open to whatever. And here's the wire. So let's heat up the soldering iron, and we'll get to work with the wire. By the way, we're no longer soldering with a potato. We have a weller now. How cool is that? Makes us happy, huh? Okay, heat up the soldering iron and go to work. Okay, so again, I jump ahead. I missed on the tail end page here. We do have to put the retainer thing in. And you want to put this forward enough that when this is in the highest position, it can't fall off the teeth. So, okay. Now they said you use the supplied washer and the self-tapping screw. Now that's the same self-tapping screw that broke. I decided I was going to gut it and try it anyway, but the holes in this plastic thing are kind of big, so I used my own washers from my workbench. But now that can go up and down, and it turns that, and it doesn't seem to flop out of position, so I think we're kind of cool. Now I'm sort of bamboozled as to where to adjust the center position, but I suppose we'll do that based on how it sounds after we get the rest of it together. So, okay. So, yeah, finally getting close to go time here. Let's tin our soldering iron so it's in a good mood and ready to work today. And we need to turn it up hotter because I don't have a hot enough. Great. Tin that up so we can clean it. The first piece of wire is going to go from here to the tip of this, so that's going to be, <sighs> let's look at the drawing too, let's flip the page, let's get on the right page, and yeah, I usually am a bit of a scatterbrain, but today is not a good day. Okay, so we're going from pin 2 here to the tip, which is this lug right there, so. That's where we're going. So we'll go from there to there. And we want to make sure we can steer clear of that. So, okay, that's the spot right there. So now I have to figure out where the nipper tool went. There's the nipper clip. And strip it. And we have to tin it. And we have to bend it around and make a mechanical connection. And then go from there. So. There's clip and strip. The next little tin. Okay, one end tin. Tin the other end. Okay. Yay. And then let's go from back here. Go underneath, right? That makes the most sense. You don't have to make a big mess if you don't have to. When you're working with any of this point to point stuff, you kind of want to try to keep it neat the whole way through. So, come here. and then discover that we don't have that jack on there tight enough. This is like Emo Phillips coleslaw recipe. Seriously, if you need a good laugh, look that up. Emo Phillips is one of the funniest comedians I can think of, and his recipe for coleslaw is just phenomenal. Not necessarily as a food, just read the story about the recipe for coleslaw. And it's just a awesome, great joke in itself. Is that finally tight? Yeah, that's tight now. Okay. And this is stiff enough, I'm going to need to go get the needle nose pliers. So, anyway, I'll solder a few of these wires and then we'll turn the camera back on. No swearing allowed. Okay, so I'm back. I got a lot of things adjusted. 
You have to adjust that switch so it clicks when you're right at the bottom. That was aggravating. Caught that. And then I put all the wires in based on our diagram here and a list of things that go from here to there. Um, tried to keep all the wires down where they can't catch on anything. Keep them in the middle here. And now we move on to components as shown in drawing three. So here we go. Uh, well, instead of just doing a magic trick like I did last time, we'll actually try to do a few here. So the first thing we're supposed to do here is put a 0.22 microfarad capacitor between pot lug, lug number 2 and terminal 23. So terminal 23 is this, and the pot is there. And I think this is a 22 microfarad cap, because that's what they drew in the picture anyway. And it says 224J, so yeah, that would be the 22. They, they do a good job of drawing the pictures. You know, I like the way they draw the pictures. So we need to go from here to there try to bend the wires and keep this thing up out of the way so it doesn't get into anything. I'm sorry, do I sound frustrated and cranky today? I should. <laughs> this project is turning into more fun now, but it's very, very fussy to get the hardware together. It's very fussy. I think that's the nicest way I can put it, because I don't want to be particularly vulgar. So, because I don't think the kit stinks and I don't think it's uh, a bad kit. I've done some mod kit stuff before and they're actually... this one is very fidgety on the mechanical side. This is different than a few of the other ones I've done. So, okay. So if you want to build this, be warned it's fidgety. Uh, okay, we'll try to make a mechanical connection there, and then we'll try to uh, go over here, come around here, put that on We have to make sure that this is lifted up off of there because we can't have that leg touching ground, so we'll pick that back up after we tack it. Yeah. Okay. So, is there anything else going to that lug after that? No, apparently not. So, okay. So that's soldered in place, put the excess, burn our fingers on the hot lead, and then oh, it's technically actually not touching. You can see it's not touching the body of the pot, but we don't want any chance of it getting to ground, so we'll kind of pull that up out of the way, make sure it's got enough clearance so that it's not going to go ground itself out by gravity. Okay, so one component in and a lot more to go. Let's see, what's the next page have us do? Next page... What? Yeah, two, it's having me put the inductor down over here with double stick tape and then solder things to it. So this is the inductor in this package. Um, 
I'm trying to see how they drew this because they kind of drew it with pretty holes and pictures and things on it. But I don't see any thing left right on this because it doesn't look like it. So. Two of the inductor leads are marked with a dot. These are positioned to the left and right side. So two of these are supposed to be marked with a dot. Do you see a dot? I see a bunch of glue. I don't see a dot. I see glue. I see lots of glue. Not seeing any dots. Not seeing dots, just seeing glue. Great. Conductor is polarized, so it doesn't matter what's left or right. Yeah. Oh. I suppose since it's an inductor, I guess we need to like figure out what goes from A to B or what's cotton, what's continuous and what's not or something. So I'll figure that out with the meter, because I'm guessing this is like a double something, I don't know. More errors in this goofy instruction manual. We'll get it going, I swear I will. Okay, addendum. So by dots, I think they mean these very poorly look things that look like maybe paint splodges that somebody put on with a toothpick. I guess that's a dot. Well, if it's not, we're going to feel a little dumb. But I think that's what it should be. So, yep. That's there. Next one, I guess I'm on to step three, which should be a piece of wire from 21 to the right inductor lead. So that would be from here to there. Okay. And then what's after that? Um, okay, then we go from 20 that one, right? 2021, 20, yeah, okay, so these two go there, and they're suggesting <coughs> for me to sneeze. Now, when you tin the wire, you make a little loop, and then you clamp your, crimp your loop down on there, which we kind of do. We'll look at it when we're done. Well, welcome back to the party. I got all the components in. Um, I discovered some other things buried these screws that hosed me earlier today um, or actually earlier yesterday I found these self tappers in there that are shorter these would have worked why are these even in the kit I don't know why they're in the kit I can't see anywhere down the line where these ever get used why are they in there these would have worked and they gave us three of them one for that and probably two for the other thing where they broke off and I used my own screws so, okay, that said, here's another thing that I think is kind of dumb. You get to wire in the battery holster, and then they give you a piece of foam to stick down in here to put your battery in, but you're apparently supposed to cut it up with a knife and make a battery chamber to go here. So, uh, okay, fine. Let's get the knife and cut a battery chamber. I, the shape of this is just goofy, uh, you know, yeah. So frustration abounds, but um, there's a lot of fiddly fidgetiness about um, adjusting the Wah pot and all that. That's fairly, fairly well explained, but uh, very fidgety project. Very, very fidgety. So I'm just going to quit complaining and go back to work and get finished up and we'll get to test this. I apologize. I like doing this stuff on camera in real time so we can all talk about it and have a grand time putting things together, but uh, this project is just too fiddly and f stuff for me to really try to do this in real time without uh, becoming way, way 
too frustrated. I think that's the best way to put it. But uh, anyway, I think we're going to make some progress. And if I get this thing all done, and then I go to fire it up and it doesn't work, then we're really going to have a have a uh, show to watch, huh? Yeah, let's watch DK Loses Marbles, a project that has broke my spirit. I think that's about the right, that cutout looks like it'll hold a battery with a little bit of pressure. No, probably not. They are expecting you to put this in the tail, aren't they? Yeah, this is supposed to fit in the tail. And it's supposed to fit here, that's supposed to fit there. And you're supposed to be able to stuff a battery in there. You gotta cut a chamber for a battery. Right. Okay, we're gonna reshape this and then we'll be back. A little more trimming is probably in order, but that'll work. But the point to point work on this is pretty cool. It's easy to modify if you want to. These kits are usually a little more fun. This one's just so cotton picking fiddly. And I've got everything adjusted according to plans. So this thing better sound rock star perfect. And then at the end you have to glue the treadle on yourself. <sighs> they give you the rubber pad, but you have to glue it on yourself with whatever kind of glue you want to find. Thanks guys. Could have put a self-adhesive sticker on there. <sighs> okay, boys and girls, and those who haven't decided, um, it's day number two, well, actually day number three, because I started late night on one day, so this day three. Anyway, day two, I got everything together and put it together, fired it up, and of course it didn't work. Um, lovely. Uh, it happens some of the time, but fortunately less often than um, less often than things do work. But uh, I got the little troubleshooting guide. It has test points throughout here to check all the voltages. All the voltages were wonderful. Now this being low voltage, it's not a problem. Um, in a tube amp, we have a technique we refer to as chopsticking, which is basically taking a wood or a plastic stick and poking things and see if any noise happens. Well, um, it was still passing signal, but it wasn't actually whying it. You know, you've got no effect out of it. Just made a hissing noise. So I started poking things, and when I poked this transistor, it made a nice, nasty, popping, screechy sound. So, uh, you know, I went looking around. The outside two leads here were soldered beautifully, but the middle lead was uh, not quite. Apparently it was a, I missed it or something, but I had bent it around and made a mechanical connection with it so I didn't notice it wobbling. Um, so we tacked that down and now it was. So we can put the uh, battery in here. Initially they just have you setting the battery in and then just sticking a sponge over it to hold it down. I kind of made a slot for my battery. Um, I just like that idea better. I want to put my battery in a slot. So it doesn't uh, wobble around. Put that down there. Actually, the battery's got to go the other way. Put the battery in. Sponge. Put the sponge in the wah pedal. I'm actually impressed. These are generic Dollar Tree 9 volts, which are supposed to be crap, right? Um, that Dollar Tree 9 volt is putting out like 9.8 volts. That thing is like full, full, full. So apparently, because they're two for a dollar, they must sell a lot of them, and the current stash of batteries at our local Dollar Tree must be very fresh. Um, and other good news, the holes for these particular screws are pre-tapped, pre so I don't have to fight this cover to get to go on. And the last step I'm actually not going to do on camera. Um, I'm not even going to film uh, film it because it's going to take a while for the glue to dry. But I have to glue this on the wah pedal. So 
I, I don't think we need that as part of directions, instructions, or anything else. So um, the end result here is going to be good. We've got a, we've got a working unit. A um, little bit of frustration here and there. I was probably working a little bit too sleepy and uh, trying to work a little bit too fast. But hey, we're we're together and it works. They did give you a sticker to put on the front of it, which you can recognize what size logo, and then they give you that little sticker, which has already got rub marks on it. Um, I don't know that I really even like the name of it, but I built it, so I figure I can name it, so I'll call it George. It's good. It's George the Law Pedal. Seems like a good name. So, yeah, I think we're cool. So we'll plug it in and see how it sounds, and then I'll glue this on later. Yeah. Well, we'll just set it on there. Now it looks right. Put some glue on there. So we'll plug it in and see if it sounds okay, and once we prove that it works, then we'll call it a day. Okay, so it's late and not feeling like playing a big demo, but just a proof of concept. Bypass signal. And back to bypass. So, yep, it, it's a wild pedal and it works. So, we'll, we'll, we'll think of some opinions on this later, but um, not a terrible build, a frustrating build because of some miscellaneous screws in the kit that shouldn't have been in there. But um, beyond that, we got it together, it's fairly straightforward, and hopefully if you're contemplating building one of these, um, you know, you can. And you'll probably see a lot of modifications available for various wah pedals to make them true bypass and to do this and da 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 This one's already true bypass right out of, this, right out of the um, gate. The manual I was reading from, the troubleshooting guide and the schematic and everything are on the Mod Kits DIY website. So if you wanted to look at the circuit and say, hey, this is really similar to another wah pedal, but I want it to sound more like this wah pedal than that wah pedal, then, you know, you can order a couple of different capacitors or different resistor values or whatever. Because it's point to point and you have a schematic, you can more or less build whatever you want in this shell. So, yeah, it's it's a cool kit. I'm I probably was building this uh, at a time I wasn't really um, super sharp, but I got it, I win, and it works, and there's a thumbs up that you can't see because the camera's all zoomed in. But, okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time with our next project on the bench. <laughs>